Ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, thank you for inviting me to contribute to the International Divestment Conference by means of this short video message. To you and to me and to ever greater numbers of people, the challenge of decarbonization has become self-evident. The question of how we can retool our economic system, how we can move our global economy and our energy systems towards a low carbon and ultimately a zero net emissions future by the end of this century or indeed earlier, is now a challenge that is no longer abstract but is indeed beginning to register in national policies, the international agreements that are being pursued through the United Nations and also at regional level, and also in the financial markets and in the strategic offices of companies and corporations. Our challenge, and one that you will focus on throughout the day in your discussions, is how to signal to financial markets, to investors, but also to the energy world, that a transition towards a green economy, a low carbon economy, that by the end of this century will enable us to look at a future of zero net emissions, is still an immense challenge. My contribution this morning is as a executive director of the United Nations Environment Programme, not necessarily a straightforward argument for divestment. As you can imagine, there are many nations and countries in the United Nations system who at this point in time do not yet either acknowledge, support or indeed endorse a divestment approach. But whether we talk about divestment at the end of consumers and investors taking decisions or we frame the challenge in terms of decarbonization, what is very evident is that both in the financial markets, in the stock exchanges, in the boardrooms, but also at the level of national policymakers, a transition out of fossil fuels and into a renewable, into a clean energy future is now not only inevitable, it is beginning to manifest itself. As many of you know, and UNEP annually records through its sustainable energy investment reports, the year 2014 already saw an increase in renewable energy investments once again to the level of over $270 billion. Almost 50% of all new electricity generating infrastructure in the year 2014 was renewable. This is quite a remarkable change and one that perhaps 10 years ago few of us would have believed possible. So our economies can respond, our financial markets can respond, but what is also evident is that in the year 2015 as we look forward to the next 20 to 30 years, the way that transition is happening is still too slow. It will not keep us within a two degree target and therefore the signals, the regulatory steps, but also the signals that come out of the financial markets from each one of us in terms of a consumer and investor behavior are obviously going to be critical in accelerating this transition. Amongst you is also my colleague Nick Robbins, who is the co-director of the inquiry into the design of a sustainable financial system that UNEP commissioned almost two years ago. We are now looking at how the financial system can be incentivized and also redirected, if you wish, in terms of increasing, not only incrementally, but in a transformational sense, the amount of investment into a low carbon future. So while on the one hand, you are focusing today on the issue of how in the market of finance, we can accelerate a transition of investment from the fossil fuel era of the 19th and 20th century into the renewable low carbon energy future of the 21st century, let us try and work holistically and systemically. Climate change is in many respects an unprecedented challenge to our economies, to our societies, to each one of us. But increasingly, and as UNEP has tried with many others to show the transition towards an inclusive green economy, and embedded in that also the response to climate change, is a tremendous opportunity. An opportunity to remove ourselves from the dependence on fossil fuels, from having decentralized and off-grid energy solutions, for instance, for the 700 million African citizens who to this day do not even have access to electricity. By the year 2050, there will be 2 billion African citizens. Clearly, the demand for electricity, for energy, the fundamental and foundational element for development is going to challenge every economy, developed or developing. As we pursue multiple strategies in trying to redirect our economic system and our financial system, let us recognize that this is an unprecedented task. It begins with each one of us, in terms of the decisions we take every day, where we put our money or do not put our money, our consumption and production behavior, but also in how ultimately as societies, as democracies, and through them, through our parliaments and the laws and regulations and policies that we design, we retool our economy, 
both in terms of infrastructure but also the financial economy to invest in a future that is fundamentally different from the past. I hope that in the review of the options for action but also the strategies that you will discuss today, we can continue to work as a community of actors from different entry points in trying to make that transition possible. Thank you for the work that you do and thank you for also raising the awareness of every citizen on this planet that we have choices, that we have options and that we can make a difference with the choices we make. Thank you.